Next up, we got to get the actual engine out of here. I've been looking at this. There's these holes on the sides of the head. There's one in every corner. And I think if I can just fabric cobble like a little, you know, dealio for this, it'll give me a nice place to attach onto with the gantry. Some people will pull these just by these studs up here, which I don't really want to do. Um, so, you know, let's see what we can do here. And good boy, you do not get fed for another 30 minutes and you know it. Stop looking at me like that. even have to split this thing. So there were two problems we're trying to fix. The first and the main problem is this horrendous leak of nasty filth. And I figured out what this is. It's not, I don't, at least I don't think it's water. There was some water. I guess there was some stuck in the pipes. Uh, what this appears to be is the absolutely disgusting combination of gear oil and diesel fuel that's in the rear end of this thing. And the reason why there's a mixture of gear oil and diesel fuel in this is because uh, what came out of this is the most absolutely rank, disgusting, that's what I get for wearing a hat, the most absolutely rank, disgusting old gear oil, better-ish, uh, that I've ever seen. Well, no, actually it isn't, but it was pretty bad. It was pretty disgusting old gear oil. So the farmer fix for that is you drain everything out, all the nasty old oil, then you refill it with much thinner diesel fuel, then you drive it around the yard a few times and you drain all that out and it gets rid of the last of the crap. So that's the part we made it to, but without the driving because the clutch is stuck. And uh, this tractor does not have hydraulics like the other Ford 800 series tractors did because it's an industrial model. This thing was originally used to power a loader and backhoe and uh, the, the factory pump, which would go where this plate is here, and like it goes over here and ties in there with these two bolts, that factory pump produces something pretty abysmal. It's like three or four gallons a minute or something. I mean, for 1950 standards, it's fine, but it's not enough to really run a loader with a backhoe. So that's why this thing has the pump on the front, and thus it does not have this pump. Anyway, these appear to be the lines from, um, from for the suction and the pickup on the factory pump. And there's a plate that goes over them, and there's a failed O-ring. In fact, you can see it right there on the right. And I suppose that's probably what's causing this filth to leak everywhere. So if I'd known that, I could have just removed the plate, which you can access with the tractor seal together, and changed out those O-rings. But it's like they say, there is no win-lose, there is only win-learn, and we learned a val very valuable lesson. There is still a chance the tractor needs to be split though, and that's because of the clutch. I've tried driving this thing, like we get it running and you mash down hard on that clutch pedal and you cannot get it in gear because it just, the clutch will not disengage. So, as 
pretty much all you guys know. What this clutch does is it separates the transmission from the engine. The transmission cannot be spinning when you put it in gear, so you press on the clutch, these plates separate, and then, uh, and then the transmission stops, you put it in gear, you let out on the clutch, this goes up against the flywheel, and the, and the engine turns the inside of the transmission and thus moves the tractor. Uh, the problem is they don't separate, so it's, this is always moving the inside of the, the transmission. And the farmer fix for this, what you do is you position the tractor however necessary, have people roll it, tug it with another tractor, whatever, and you take a chain, you tie it to the back of this thing in a safe manner, and, uh, and you tie it off to like a big tree or something along those lines, and you just let that clutch out, you know, like fully let it out the rest of the way, and you just let it spin these wheels, and hopefully the force of trying to separate the clutch with that rotational resistance from the tree or whatever will pop these things apart. Uh, I've never personally done that. I've just heard of people who are doing it, but you know what? I don't really regret coming in here because now I know what the inside of this looks like and it looks really good. That throw out bearing is bloody mint. I turned it by hand. It's as smooth as can be. Uh, it looks like everything moves just fine. The, uh, the clutch pedal does not spring back like it's supposed to. That's what that giant spring is for. So I think something needs to be oiled or cleaned up, but really nothing major. Okay, well it's apart now. That was a lot easier than I was expecting. Ah, there's crap on this, it fell in the muck. That makes me wonder, what the heck is the, uh, where's the problem with this thing then? What's not disengaging? All right, well, it turns out the clutch is fine. How about that? It is uh, perfectly mint, and there's like a mile of material above the ends of those rivets. So that's uh, a pleasant surprise. This is a little bit of a surprise. I'm not that surprised, however. Man, we're really getting a lot of wind. I'm not that surprised, however, considering this was a tractor loader backhoe. So, I mean, I, I think the backhoe was used a lot more than the loader from what I remember about when I took it apart and butchered it and got all that junk off this otherwise pretty much pristine tractor. Uh, I think that this mainly sat powering the hydraulics so the backhoe could be used and just moving around a little for that. I don't think it was actually out plowing fields like wearing down that clutch all day every day. Uh, but anyway, looking at this, it actually seems like everything's fine other than this, uh, this bearing here, this, I mean, it's... I don't know if you can hear that on camera, it's like... around like that, that sounds really bad. So that will need to be replaced. I feel better because there's at least one thing that needs to be replaced after I split this tractor. Uh, but over here, everything looks pretty decent. I think that all this really needs is an adjustment so that thing will go further and thus disengage the clutch further uh, actually stopping the transmission from spinning. I think that's really all it was, this one stupid adjustment. But, you know, live and learn and, uh, and you know, does this kind of suck? Yeah, a little bit, but the reality is I only knew of one thing other than an adjustment which never really crossed my mind. I only knew of one thing that would cause the, uh, the clutch not to fully disengage and that's a stuck clutch for a machine that sat for decades that's far from uh, impossible for that to happen and this displayed literally all of the signs of that at least to my limited knowledge so I felt pretty safe in assuming that's what the problem was uh, did waste a little bit of time I will be honest uh, but really not all that much time today's been a pretty comfortable pretty easy day and I spent probably half of it working on stuff on the front of the engine and one could say I'm ahead because now I don't have to buy a clutch. I was expecting that all that stuff was going to be trashed from sitting. So I'd be looking at two to four hundred dollars for a new clutch, flywheel, and pressure plate. Now I don't have to buy any of that. Just like a six dollar bearing. So that's kind of cool. And uh, now I know a little more about how these go together. I wish that I'd done a little more research work and found these pipes. I don't think I would have found them, however, because I couldn't really tell exactly where the leak was coming from. It basically it came out like here and like, I don't know, just maybe not up that high, but it was coming from all over the place around this housing. I really couldn't pinpoint it and it's been happening for quite a while, so it's kind of a mess, but you know, whatever, live and learn and uh, you know, it's just, it's just not that big of a deal. If this is the worst thing that happens to me this month, I'll be doing pretty well. And if nothing else, it is pretty cheap insurance because now I know what the center of the tractor is like and the condition and what it looks like and everything along these lines. 
So I guess I'm going to take the number down off that bearing and order that. I'm not even gonna bother replacing that clutch cause like I said, it's bloody mint. And uh, yeah, I think that's, yeah, that's smooth as silk. Yeah, all right, um, yeah, just random adventures, fun stuff. So what do I think of this thing after actually having had worked on it? I think it is awesome. I think it's a very well designed tractor. There's not really anything about it that I don't like. I do have two minor complaints. It does have this weird rotating shifter thing. It turns in like a semicircle, it's in a semicircle thing and it goes up and down and there it's, I just, I don't like it. It's really weird, nothing else uses it. It's just a pain. I wish that they had done that differently. <clears throat> the other thing, sometimes, you will work on something and you say to yourself at the end of the day, wow, you know, I took all that apart with like three wrenches. Other projects, you're like, well, you know what? I'm just gonna go get the entire set because I'm tired of dragging stuff over here. That was definitely how this one went. I mean, I feel like every other bolt, the head on it is a different size. Some of these things, the heads and the nuts on them are different sizes. Very frustrating, very inefficient. But the tractor itself, I mean, there's, there's nothing that I've actually found with it that I'm like, wow, this is an incredibly stupid design. Everything seems logically made and very well built. So, uh, yeah, I kind of wanted to have that little rant now because otherwise I'm gonna forget about, you know, at least the every nut and bolt is a completely different size aspect of this. But, you know, I'm actually really enjoying working on this thing. I, like I said, I think it's a really good machine and I'm glad that I've opened it up and there's not any major problems in here because there's a joke in the farming community that just a clutch is never just a clutch. You open it up and the splines are destroyed and this, that, and the other thing is bad and you find out the rear main seal's leaking, all this crazy stuff. In this case, just a clutch, it seems like it'll actually be less than a clutch, just that stupid bearing. Ah, <sighs> fun stuff. All right, well, I'm just glad I didn't drop a half a tractor on myself. I'd like to thank you guys for watching this. And uh, yeah, hopefully you guys got a good laugh out of my epic fail, which thankfully wasn't all that epic. Thanks for watching, have a nice night.